Hey guys, in today's class we are going to talk about carbon and the types of bonds that carbon can make. These are important concepts for you to understand better the biology part of our course. But before we talk about carbon, we need to distinguish between organic and inorganic compounds. Organic compounds are those essentially having carbon and hydrogen atoms in the structure along with other atoms. The type of bond is mainly covalent, which we've already learned before. Most organic compounds are colorless and most do not dissolve in water. On the other hand, inorganic compounds are those mostly made of any atoms other than carbon and hydrogen, or when these two are not bonded directly. Inorganic compounds can show both covalent and ionic bonds. Inorganic compounds are usually colorful and most of them can dissolve in water due to the presence of ionic bonds. There is in fact a larger variety of organic compounds over inorganic compounds and they are really important for living things. Carbon is the backbone of life since living organisms consist mostly of carbon-based compounds. These biological compounds can be large and complex, as we will see in a minute. Carbon is the element represented by the symbol C. It has the atomic number 6, therefore it has 6 protons and 6 electrons, and the atomic mass 12, which means it has 6 neutrons. But why is carbon so special for life? Well, basically because, from the six electrons the atom has, four of them are on the outer orbit and can be used to bond covalently with a variety of other atoms and in a variety of ways, including other carbon atoms. The different ways that carbon can bond determines how the molecule will react in a chemical reaction, and consequently the molecule's biological function. There are four main types of organic compounds with biological interest. They are carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. Let's see each of them in more detail. Carbohydrates are organic molecules consisting of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. They are essential to the structure and function of cell membranes and undergo reactions that release a large amount of immediate energy. I say immediate energy because you can use it right away. The simpler carbohydrates are called monosaccharides, like glucose and fructose, which you can find in fruits. More complex ones are called disaccharides, like sucrose and lactose, which you can find in sugar and milk. And the really complex ones are polysaccharides, like starch and cellulose, which you can find stored in the liver or in plants. Lipids are organic molecules consisting of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen atoms and are used for long-term energy storage. They are also known as fats because they are composed of one glycerol molecule and up to three long fatty acid chains. When lipids have one glycerol and one fatty acid chain, they are called monoacyl glycerides. When they have two fatty acid chains, they are called diacyl glycerides and three fatty acid chains are called triacyl glycerides. One important lipid molecule in life is the phospholipid, which is the main component of the cell membrane. This molecule is particularly interesting because of the interactions with water. The fatty acid chains are hydrophobic, which means they don't like or interact with water but the region where it has the phosphate group, which is made of phosphorus and oxygen atoms, is hydrophilic, which means they interact well with water. 
This is extremely important because these molecules make up our cell membranes. Imagine if the cell membranes were only hydrophobic. That would mean that water could not get inside the cells. And if the cell membranes were only hydrophilic, we would easily dissolve in water. Imagine that. These fatty acid chains can also be saturated or unsaturated. You probably heard about these terms before, right? Chemically, saturated fats means they contain only simple bonds and unsaturated means they contain double bonds. But why is this important? Well, let's say that saturated fats are more difficult to break apart in your body, so they tend to accumulate. So, saturated fats are not good, right? And unsaturated fats can break apart easily at a double bond, so it can be absorbed in your organism. This means that unsaturated fats are good for you. Examples of saturated fat are those solid fats that give you heart diseases like butter and bacon grease. And unsaturated fats are liquid fats that are healthier like avocado and olive oil. Proteins are organic compounds composed of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen atoms. They have several functions in life. Structural use, as they make up the muscle fibers in our bodies, as enzymes, which speed up chemical reactions taking place in our bodies, and energy use, in case we run out of lipids. Perhaps the most important example is the hemoglobin, which is present in red blood cells. Nucleic acids are organic molecules made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen and phosphorus atoms. They are useful to store and carry all our genetic information. The basic unit of nucleic acids are called nucleotide and has three main groups. A phosphate group composed of phosphorus and oxygen atoms, a sugar group and a base group composed of nitrogen atoms. Examples of nucleic acids are the DNA, the RNA and the ATP. The ATP, which stands for adenosine triphosphate, is an important molecule for life because it is the primary molecule used for transferring of energy in the cells. As the name says, it has three phosphates bonded together and these bonds carry a lot of energy. So when this molecule participates in reactions in the cells, it can release energy when it is broken down and the molecule can also be restored when we take energy from food. And remember guys, sanitize your hands, put on a face mask and keep social distance.